I'm going to try and connect three ideas. Keep it simple. Three ideas. One, that the type of person who runs our world today is a sociopathic strategist. Two, that within each of us as individuals, we are legion. In other words, there are many sub personalities or personae or motivational modules. At that, there are so many synonyms for this thing that we're trying to point at within us, or these many things, is heartening because it suggests that there's some truth to this uh, concept or phenomenon within us, that they all converge on the same sort of concepts and um, notions to describe what they're trying to describe is heartening. It suggests that it's true. And thirdly, the third point I want to connect to these preceding two is that within every human being, there are those many sub-personalities, but that some of those sub-personalities are louder, invest more time, energy, resources in yelling and screaming in trying to attract your attention and hold it than they are worth. Does that make sense? Okay, so their sort of advertisement is not proportional to what they are worth in terms of who they make you become when you predominantly embody those loud voices. Okay, we're going to we're going to unpack this because this I think is extremely important. Our world is in Daniel Schmachtenberger's language, criminally insane. <laughs> I laugh, but like, it's not funny. There's some serious shit going down in our world and we are all complicit. And it's like, oh my God, we can sort of speak to this, but I don't think people, the majority of people, uh, have a clear picture of what the frick is going on in our world today, just how insane it is. You know, Schmachty will give the examples of the battery chickens or the factory farm chickens where they're all just lumped in on top of each other they can barely move their quality of life is like it might as well be zero it's it might as well be zero it's nowhere near sort of wild type chicken quality of life so that's just one example uh yeah factory farms you know the, the way humans are treating animals in industrial commercial farming operations like this is just horrible they're they're for, for these organisms for these animals the end of the world is not it is actually it, the ecological disaster is happening for them already okay so that's an important point or tangential point that the the ecological catastrophes or disasters that we we are so you know we're all anticipating and that we're all sort of well oh, what's going to happen we're all we don't know what's going to happen it's happening for a lot of organisms and people, you know, like the ecological disaster for the African slave laborers who are getting paid dirt to mine the cobalt for the technological devices that I'm freaking using right now. You know, it's there for them, like it's happening. So we're in it right now. It's not something that is going to occur in the future. Oh, how many more examples? There are so many more. The megafauna extinctions and the cascading effects of having lost their ecological function. That is an ecological disaster right there, and we're all experiencing that. Uh, agriculture, the, the transition from extensive, traditional rural landscape sort of agriculture where the land and the people interacted in such a way that it was a sustainable relationship where you could sustainably harvest wood for fuel for your home, you could sustainably shepherd your flock on the mountains and hills, you could sustainably grow the food you needed to consume to stay alive and stay healthy. The transition from that extensive traditional farming, uh, rural landscape and farming techniques to intensive modern chemically laden agriculture to this new model is another example of an ecological disaster that we are currently living. It's not something that is to come in the future. Okay, so that is what was I saying there? Why did I say all that? Well, the sociopathic strategists who run our world are the ones who care not for 
nature. Okay, why? Okay, well, because ever since World War II, there's been an agreement across all the nations, the powerful nations, that we as humans are no longer going to seek to undermine each other, but instead we're going to try and grow the economy uh, across the board for everyone so that everybody gains for as long as possible. But obviously, growing the economy forever and demanding of the resources, the finite resources of the earth, exponentially more with each year because with interest and the specific or the particular economic system that we run, there's an embedded growth obligation. And with interest alone, there are other factors, but interest alone requires an exponential increase in the rate of harvesting, exploitation and use of natural resources. So that alone, you know, is crazy. What? What are we doing? That, that doesn't work. <laughs> it actually doesn't work. And I don't think this message gets through to people. Okay, this is what I was saying at the start. This is, this is not working. Like, we are experiencing the catastrophes and disasters, but there will come a point where it will be so immediate and so blatantly obvious and so tragic right before our eyes. And we'll ask, how, how couldn't we see this coming? And people like Shmakti will say, I was telling you, I was there, but it's not about that. It's actually about raising the consciousness and awareness right now so that we can avoid that because it's not about the sort of, what's that word? There's a word for, you know, for saying, like, I was right the whole time. What is that word? Damn. It's the perfect word to use here. Fucking brain. So, that's pretty sociopathic, to destroy the world for the sake of short-term gain, liquidating our beautiful planet for the sake of some measly billions of profits. Okay. Now, within each individual. So I suppose that is a sort of a collective humanity problem where we have hyper agentic sociopathic strategists, strategists who have an awful lot of power and whose personality traits push them into the sociopathic realm. <sighs> Within each individual, we, we, can, we can begin to attempt to address this maybe <sighs> by bringing to the forefront of our consciousness the characters that are within who are long-term in their thinking. How do we do that? We quieten the loud voices of the short-term characters who will insist that you should continue scrolling or who will insist that you should continue eating the bad food because it's so goddamn tasty or who will insist that you continue watching those videos online that grab your attention like nothing else but, which, but none of which really gives you a sense of meaning and a sense of engagement with life or a sense of excitement it's all very short-term gratification, BS activities. Okay, so you have those short-term characters in you who are very loud. Let us suppose that you also have long-term characters within you who are the inverse. They're very quiet because they're busy going about figuring out how it is to be a long-term player. They're too busy to advertise themselves in such a way that betrays just how worthy they are and just how worth your time it would be to invest in pulling them to the forefront of your consciousness and mind and having those long-term characters become predominantly embodied by your biological encasement and begin acting as such, thinking, speaking and acting uh, with those long-term characters uh, pretty much yeah, predominantly determining your behavior. But, okay, quick caveat, the short-term characters are not all bad because they're necessary, they're biologically necessary. You need to eat, you need to have solid social bonds, especially intimate bonds with other people. 
and you need to drink and you need to sleep. So that those short term characters, they have their place, but don't let them get out of control. Now let's connect those two points with the third and final point. What was the third and final point? I remember the third and final point. Whoa. This is now connecting in a way that I didn't expect. <laughs> Class. So the long-term characters don't advertise themselves in such a way that would betray just how worthy they are. Okay. Schmachti mentioned something in that Sweden, Swedish, I'll put the link up here. There's a, there's a talk. There it is. He mentioned that like the, the Jane Goodalls of the world, those people who have an immense love for the natural world, who will like commit their lives to studying the natural world and, and getting work done, unfortunately don't have within them that strategist that would help them outcompete the sociopathic strategists who are currently liquidating the planet. What we need are humans with the heart of Jane Goodall and the strategy of Henry Kissinger. Join those two qualities together and we will prevent the complete and utter liquidation of the planet and we will see, we will make manifest the most beautiful world that we all know, that all of our hearts know is possible. But that's the key is uh, joining the strategy with the open heart. And I think Eric Weinstein speaks to this. He says it in this way. This is, this is the private language phenomenon. Again, the convergence of ideas upon the same sort of underlying concept. The only difference is the, the language that makes it manifest in the world or the language with which a person uses to describe it. So Eric Weinstein says, like pursue that which aligns your head, heart and loins like that which gets you intellectually engaged, that which gets you sort of maybe intuitively engaged, and that which turns you on. Like, okay, obviously <laughs> you're not gonna reproduce with ideas, but you can sort of transmute that reproductive energy, which is immense reproductive. <laughs> Whoa. You can use that to your advantage by channeling it, transmuting it and channeling it into that pursuit that you know must be done. So there are the three ideas connected with an unexpected ending, and that's what I love. Wow, the complex biological world is so freaking amazing, including the human mind. <laughs> Whoa. So that's it. I hope that this video helped you in your thinking. Let's get on it, let's get strategizing.